everything that's happening in society with this national pandemic and the impact it's having on education with kids being at home and now it's looking like possibly for the rest of the school year i don't know what it is there yeah. have they announced if it's through the end of the school year they haven't announced it yet but like you said it's it's, it's looking like it's definitely going to be to the end of the year we would only have two and a half weeks left if we came back after april so right right what state are you in in Louisiana. Oh, okay. What part of Louisiana? In uh, Baton Rouge. I just saw a report today, um, and I know I've talked to a lot of people from New Orleans, but New Orleans mm -hmm. has it really bad. Yeah, that's what that's what I keep hearing. They're the the hot spot. The majority of the cases in Louisiana are where uh, they have the the largest number in in uh, New Orleans. And they said that for the percentage of fatalities, it's the highest. They said that it's higher than New York. Yeah, I just heard that oh, this morning or yesterday yeah. on news. I just heard him say that. Yeah. Yes, pretty bad. Yeah. So New Orleans being hit again because I know I did some work with survivors after Hurricane Katrina and a lot of the disparities, you know, mm -hmm. the way that you know, people might have more pre-existing conditions. Those same things that prevented them from being able to evacuate are now the same mm -hmm. things that are causing them to be more prone to having fatalities from this. So oh, yeah, I haven't even thought of, thought of it in that way, but that, definitely. So what was the rant all about a week ago? You got to your wit's end that day. Tell us about it. Walk us through what was happening that day. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm trying to remember which one. So uh -oh. that was so. It was where you broke down and you did your son's homework for him. Oh, girl. <laughs> you know I'm getting mad because he's getting frustrated and I'm getting annoyed and then I'm getting mad and then I'm getting mad again. It's just I said, just don't even worry about it. I got it. I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna do it for you, and I did it for him. Yes, I did it for him, and I'm I'm and I'm okay with that. Now, do I want to do it again next week? Absolutely not. Now, it was my fault because we just started on Thursday. <laughs> but that's a lot for a second year, second year old, second grader to be submitting documents and making copies. And the second graders can't do that on their own. So basically, mom, dad, parent, guardian, whomever, if there even is one in the home that can help them, this is work for you to do not for the children. And I think that's really unreasonable. And I'm gonna have to give my academic feedback to the powers that be because I just don't think that that's okay. Oh yeah, okay, so I rant regularly. <laughs> but that particular day, um, that was the end of our first week of the digital classroom. So, and that week our school had kind of laid out all of their expectations were which were you know pretty lofty i'll say so there were a lot of things that they were expecting the teachers to do um one of those things being to call the parents three times per week um the parents of every student that was one thing um they had recently well we had a zoom call and they told us kind of, you know, what we should present in our online classroom as far as like lessons, uh, well, there's, there's short, so there should be a lesson plan, objectives, um, exit tickets, kind of jump starts and bell ringers and just all of these things that I was like, what? Um, and mind you, I had only had maybe about 20% of each of my three classes where the students were actually participating. Um, so I had done like some live, um, modeling, I used Instagram for that, which I did have a, a, a few students uh, tune into that. Um, and my son, as I said, he's in second grade seven, they were sending, uh, they made a Google classroom for the second graders. So they were posting work on there and we couldn't get into his at the beginning of the week. It was maybe Thursday by the time we actually did get into his google classroom and when we went on there there were 10 assignments for him to do as a second grade link there were about 52 slides that he had to go through and read and answer questions and that was just from one assignment um 
and it was, it was a lot. He had to open up Google Docs and type in the Google Docs to, you know, create his responses, which is a challenge. Um, and, you know, the the uh, text was deleting and parts of the pages was disappearing and he was losing it. Um, and so it was it was a it was a challenge for you know to complete the ten assignments. So I was helping him do it at first. He was um, he was trying to type. Then I said, you know what, just tell mommy the answers and I'll type it in. So he was doing that, and it, you know it was taking a very long time. So I told him, you can just go ahead, I'll do it. <laughs> just I'll I'll go ahead and complete this one for you. We'll we'll do a better job next week. Um, so that that was that was kind of that day. It was a lot. So how? As a teacher and a mom, how is this, all of these expectations, what your school is expecting of you and what it seems like his school is expecting of him, how is that affecting your stress level or your ability? To um, well, he actually goes to the school that I work at, which is why they're, they have so much <laughs> for him to do, but it is stressful. Um, just you know trying to i don't want to it, 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 it's it's difficult to work at it's difficult to work at home period like um and, a, and try to, to try to create that classroom setting um and then as a teacher you know that your students are not in an optimal setting for learning you know you don't a lot of them you don't know where they are what they're doing and our school was was trying to tell us that their work needed to be due on a certain day so after that, cut it off and, I, you know, so I said, well, they may not be on, on Monday from 10 to 12, they may not be in a place where they can sit down and do their English work. So it, it's not right for us to tell them you need to be done by noon. We don't know what they're doing. A lot of them aren't at home. A lot of them are taking care of, of smaller children, of babies. Um, a lot of them are sharing computers with other people. A lot of them are trying to get on hot spots and things. So, um, you know, that part for me was really frustrating just to, um, just that they were trying to kind of uh, give them structure like, like, like they were at school and just kind of not, you know, being mindful of the fact that they're not at school and being mindful of the demographic that we work in and, you know, the challenges that these kids face on a regular. And for a lot of the kids that, you know, staying home is, is, is worse than going to school. So that was stressful. And I try to not get too worked up because, you know, I can't really control it. But just that piece right there um, was kind of frustrating for me. And then um, having to kind of create that structure for my son, watching him, you know, do his assignments, um, even though it's a lot less than what he would do at school, it's challenging to just make him sit there in front of the computer and okay, now you have to do this one, now do this one, and he's getting restless, he wants to go do other things, so it's, it's just, it, it is, it's a little bit stressful to, to try to create that, stress, that structure in a, in a home setting um, when there's so many other things going on, then, you know, still having to do, prepare the meals, and take, you know, do the regular household things, which there are a lot more of them to do when you're at home all day, so just balancing that is, it's a lot at the time. Because I know, Erica, you can relate because you have your, um, what grade is your daughter? Kindergarten or first grade? Oh, I got a whole gang over here. <laughs> 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 I have a kindergartner, and I have a two-year-old, um, and I have a three-month-old. How's your daughter been handling the, the online coursework? Of course, she's in kindergarten, so they're not really turning anything in. They have a Zoom call once a week. You know, she's stressed from her family life situation. So let her sleep in a little bit. So she gets probably, I would say, about an extra hour, maybe hour and a half of sleep. And then, um, and so my niece goes first, does her work on the computer, and then my daughter goes and does her work on the computer. Um, Can you talk about the stress from family life situation, I guess, with you guys living with your, you know, sisters, family is what you're kind of referring to. And well, I guess schools are not taking that into, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say, so basically I'm separated from my husband at this point, um, definitely moving towards the divorce. <laughs> so, um, and then he is still working right now. So he, he drives um, cargo van. So he, um, they're not able to even see him right now because he's still out here in all these elements and I'm not. 
and then I have this three month old baby as well. So it's, you know, it's, it's just a lot, like they're not seeing him. So that's a big extra stressor on her life as well. Cause it's been, I don't know, maybe like over a month now, I would say. That wow. Has- that's interesting. I never really had to think about that. Like if a child isn't living with their parent, they are, the quarantine is preventing them from even seeing each other and interacting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. And I know there's a lot of students out there that are probably going through that. You know, students that, you know, we're requiring to do all of these hours of work and use, like you said, having deadlines on it and they're stressed mm-hmm. out and yeah. no one is there. There's no support. Like you said, their school is a place that they like to go. Some kids who might be on free lunch and aren't getting that. <laughs> yeah, that's my whole, our whole school has a free lunch. Um, I guess there are so many students that needed that they just offer it to the whole school Mm -hmm. so our school right now is doing um they're delivering meals um through the bus route and they're also they have like i think from 9 to 12 they do meal pickups on monday wednesday and friday as well then i have students who like you said are not at home at all i have one student um because our school requires us to call the parents so she hadn't turned in her assignments. I called her mom. Her mom said she's with her grandmother in a whole nother city in her hometown. So she had to send her to her grandmother. She's, she tries to FaceTime her and help her with her schoolwork. So, you know, and she, she, she can't even see her mom now because her mom still has to work. Um, and that's, you know, the reality for a lot of students, they're not, they're not at home. Yeah. Wow. Has your daughter been like um, showing like, visually upset or crying, Erica, about not seeing dad? My gosh, every single day. Oh, yeah. So even me with my son and, you know, losing his brother last year, I try, I'm, I'm not stressing him about the schoolwork. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it. I don't even know how it's going to be graded. Do you, like, since you're still in the classroom, Chelsea, how is it going to be counted? <laughs> um, our school still has not said, but what they have said is we cannot give them zeros we can't we can't um not give them points you know so basically it's not going to be it sounds like everybody has to get credit for it whether they do it or not um so can't we can't fail them which you know we shouldn't be able to because we don't know what's going on where they are a lot of them may not be able to complete the work so they said um it's going to be average end or something with their other uh quarters or whatever Mm -hmm. so they don't really know (laughs) pretty much um which which was just you know another it just added to the frustration where they were you know hounding us to get all of this done to call these parents make sure we're communicating with the students basically for nothing because it's not going to count um and you know you still want to you still want your kids to be engaged but the reality of it is you're not in the classroom you're not giving them new material it's basically just being just busy work to keep them keep their minds kind of turning um and that's frustrating for them to you know act as though it's going to count when you told us everybody gets participation points for it okay so i mean you know we still have to do what the school still has to run but it just it just kind of adds to the frustration do you feel like you're kind of giving you busy work? We talked with you just said giving yes, the kids. I, do. Busy work. <laughs> I absolutely do. <laughs> I do feel like they're trying to give us, you know, they're giving us busy work and they're trying to justify, you know, um, us still getting paid, which I am definitely appreciative of that. Um, so I try to limit my complaining, but because, you know, we, we do still get paid, but it's it, it is still busy work. They, they're they even trying to find things for people that are not um, directly involved in instruction. They're, they're trying to find things for them to do as well. They're, well, you can have the office people help call the parents or the dean of students. Um, give him a list of names and give the TOR person this. And I don't I'm like I'm not giving anyone else anything to do when there's nothing to do. Make sure you're having your teacher assistants help you do X, Y, Z. There's nothing for them to do. And I'm not just making, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Definitely busy with us. I feel like, cause this is my first year out the classroom in 10 years. So for the years that I was in the classroom, I felt that way anyway. Like 
Okay, so mm-hmm. we would have to be at school till 310. School gets out at 220, but half oh, the time yeah. we're not doing anything from 220 to 310. But when I get home, I'm grading work and I'm doing things. So why do I have to sit in the building so that you can say that I was here? Or when we meet, mm-hmm. month, we're meeting and sometimes it's like, we're meeting just to meet. We're playing icebreaker yeah. games, we're playing games and it's like, Put them in an email. what are we doing right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and, and I think some of that time, those meetings and the um, in-services, we could have spent more time on self-care because I've noticed a lot of teachers now who are saying that they were like almost at their breaking point right before this happened. Mm-hmm. And then this happening is actually giving them a needed break to where now they have reclaimed, reclaimed their sanity or, you know, their mental health. Yeah, for sure. That's, yeah. <laughs> I've, seen that. I've seen a lot of that as well. Um, you know, because we do need breaks. So it's unfortunate, but it is like a, you know, just a kind of a five relief to get that time out of the classroom. What What are your thoughts on like what if what are the alternatives other than what we're doing right now? What could we have done for the students and the teachers? That ooh, I really don't break. know. <laughs> Would you say, Erica? <laughs> let them get a break. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let them breathe. Let them build their relationships with their family. Let them, yeah. you know, figure out how they're going to move in this world that's changed completely. And, you know, I, I feel like that the biggest thing that should be happening is uh, professional development for teachers so that they are prepared to go back into the classroom, if we make it back in August, to go back yeah. into the classroom and be ready to teach and uh, weave that digital learning in there properly so that if something like this, even if they don't make it back in August, at least in August, they'll be prepared to effectively teach their students. Um, yeah. But definitely, I think that um, there should be a lot more focused on uh, like building your relationship with your family, spending time with them? Um, I agree with that, especially, um, well, first, you know, that the piece about kind of getting that time with your family, um, so, and the, we don't really know how to do the digital teaching too. So we, they just tried to jump straight into it when we weren't ready, we weren't prepared. Um, you know, some teachers use a lot of technology in the classroom. Others don't, like myself. I use minimal because I'm not a really techie computer person. Um, but, you know, I think it would be good, like she said, for that um, professional development piece. We could, you know, I don't know how, get, get some of that. We definitely need that um, for now, for the future, um, so that we can properly implement uh this digital learning because that's a struggle and for next year like she said we need to be ready if if we have to if we even go back next year um yeah, so some people are saying that this is an 18 month problem that this could extend out you know <laughs> we don't know what it's going to look like you know so that'll be a whole different conversation and it does make us look at education differently are there things that we like with you know the world being flat like they say you know technology with facebook and in internet it allows us to be in different places so if we had been using technology in the classroom in a different way before this happened perhaps Mm -hmm. we would be in a different place now so maybe it's making us rethink how we you know structure education moving forward thinking about like the littlest part of technology where like you know opening up the document writing something, saving it, making sure you label your document correctly, saving it in a place that you'll be able to find it, how to upload it to something. Like there's so many little steps to the process of using technology for adults and children. Like I'm talking mostly from a child's perspective right now, but even for adults, like I am a techie person, but still figuring out how to integrate those things into a lesson plan is also like a whole nother set of Mm -hmm. skills. Yeah, that's a good point because even on the high school level, because I taught high school, kids didn't know how to save as to, to save their document in a particular location. And you would think that they do, being that they are on their gadgets all the time, but when it comes to assignments and things on a computer, it's a completely different ballgame for them. It is. 
Yeah. That's another um, meme that I have. I, I never posted it, but it was like how I save documents. And it's like um, final draft, final draft two, final draft three. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it killed me because I had students turning in their assignments on Google Do Google Drive, and so they would all name it like um, values values test. And I'm like, if everybody names it values test, how am I going to know which one is yours? Put your name in it. <laughs> Put your name in the title that you're saving it as. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, back to self care. So we're talking about all of these things with how stressful the job of teaching is now and it was stressful before i know that there were times before when i was teaching i was always stressed out when i would get home and that was one of my biggest regret regrets with um when i lost my son is that i spent so much time with my students and i was a coach as well so outside of my home and then when i got home i was so exhausted i was just exhausted emotionally and physically exhausted that i don't feel that during the track season he got the best part of me you know mm -hmm. so i think that as a system we need to look at that too because these are people with families and how can we better serve them to serve their students and their families what type of things for self-care do you um, think could be integrated into the education system i would say i, I would like to maybe like if you can't make the meeting the faculty meeting or whatever like maybe you can plug in digitally now and and join via zoom that mm -hmm. would be, um, that that would be accommodation yeah. that would be great we could be yeah. at home yeah. the technology is letting us know since we can have staff meetings from home now then when this is over perhaps we can have staff meetings from home you can go home you can start your dinner and then log on for a staff meeting at this time mm -hmm. that would be excellent yeah. Yeah, that definitely would be. Yeah, I'm big on like, like, I love the social emotional learning aspect of it all. Um, and I'm very big on thinking that um, some of those faculty meetings need to weave in a piece of social emotional learning where people feel like they have a safe space to really be honest and share. Mm -hmm. Every teaching job is not as stressful. But I feel that when you're working with at risk students, when you're working with kids that come to you with so many issues from um, home or wherever they're coming from then it's going to take another another layer of emotional learning for the for those kids and an understanding of how to reach those kids and understanding yeah. that they can come in with an attitude on this day and how to equip ourselves to help diffuse that that bomb that's waiting to go off but if we yeah are not working on looking at that. Like I know at my school, we're a Title I school, we're predominantly African-American and Hispanic. We read the book, Teaching with Poverty in Mind years ago, but then we never talked about implementing the strategies or weaving that into how we taught. Like we looked at the causes for behaviors, but we never looked at any solutions on how um, to deal with those behaviors or to help those students. And being that I'm a person, I'm from Chicago, so I, like most of my family, has grown up with poverty in mind, you know, and, you know, those issues. And so when I see the students, I see my family members, I'm looking at my cousins, I'm looking at my mother's background in history. And um, I empathize with that. But I know a lot of teachers do not have that connection. And that's something another layer of um, in service or teacher professional development that can be um, worked on is making sure that we understand where these kids are coming from, what they've been through, mm -hmm. especially coming from this crisis. Like someone who lives in a you know four bedroom house and has their fr refrigerator stocked with food, their experience through this crisis is completely different than someone else who's waiting each day for the food to be delivered from their school. Yeah, yeah, that I think that's really important um, for teachers to understand that that's the thing like where the kids are coming from what they're what they deal with emotionally and you know learn, realizing that they need to address every child differently they kind of you know need to just just think about you know their behaviors and what might be causing them um i learned to do that a long time ago kids don't just have you know a, a negative disposition for no reason there's always something going on um and you know you can tell the kids that really have something serious going on whether they want to share with you or not teachers just need to learn to identify it and um just kind of 
be a little more loving for that child. And a lot of times that's really all it takes instead of poking at them and be, you know, trying to treat them the way you would treat a child that has it, has everything together. And, you know, so I think that that's really important for that. That could be something to do within the in-service. I don't know how, but have teachers just, um, you know, learn, learn about that. Cause a lot of teachers, I don't, I don't think they realize it. Yeah. Yeah. And, one other thing I wanted to talk about is this eight hour day. Do you think that we need to return back to an eight hour day for school after this? I know we're going to do it, but what's your opinion on it? <laughs> when I was Absolutely. researching it, I could, everything that I looked up with the, the reason that the school day is the length that it is, it all coincides with the work day of the parents. So what mm -hmm. I interpret that is, is that we are basically like a glorified daycare to keep kids yeah. off the streets and out of trouble. Um, yeah. while the parents are at work. Cause, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's So what if we went true. to school for five hours and three hours they had online learning or something or um, internships or work studies? You know, there are more ways that we can integrate this to make us more productive. Like just because we did this years ago and at the beginning of education, everything else in our world and our society has evolved except for education. Right. Yeah, and that, you know, that, that, that just kind of made me think like you know the end of the day that's when no one gets anything done i don't have classes at the end of the day anymore thank god but those classes would be the worst for me for the students they would be not they they, they were not productive there was almost no learning going on i would try to do some teaching it, it was just a disaster and i know no matter what room they're in that is usually how it is. No, nobody is functioning anymore, including the teachers. It just is they're drained. So like you said, maybe some online learning at the end, maybe even in the beginning, because some kids, it takes them the whole first block to wake up and be ready to even learn. So maybe kind of, I don't know, sandwiching it with some technology, you know, uh, actual learning interaction with people. And then at the end, something else that that does not require them to be up and focused and thinking um, that would be very beneficial. And that's good what you said in the beginning because I know with me working in high school you would always like high school, middle school, and elementary start at different times and you would have some high school students who are always late to school because they had to get their younger siblings on the bus or get their mm -hmm. younger siblings to school. So Right. Yeah. I have kids like that. I've had kids that always miss homeroom so they didn't learn anything that year. I've had several students like that or students that always leave early. Um, and, you know, so giving them something that is kind of self-paced and things they can do on their own or online, that, that will probably be very good for um, students in situations like that. Have you had students that like kind of disappear for a period of time and come back? Like, I, I don't want to call them dropping out, but if they like leave and they're out of school for an extended amount of days like 20 days and come back um i don't know if i've had that but i've had students that only come to school once or twice a week oh um, wow i had and a girl they, like that like, perform well she could have she had a lot of potential but I couldn't, I never had the time to work with her because she wasn't there. So just being as simple as her writing, everything was a run on sentence, everything. And she was never there when we talked about sentence structure and, you know, man, if she would have been here, you know, a couple of days ago, she could have got this. And so that was a struggle. Um, she missed a lot of school. She literally came like once or twice a week. I would be shocked to see her. Um, I've had a couple of kids like that actually. Yeah, because it brings to mind LeBron James and um, his whole motivation behind starting the I Promise School. But if you look up his story, he missed 83 days of fourth grade. And that makes me look at the situation. I know that it's not ideal, like you guys said earlier, for us to have kids without assignments for an extended period. But it's not going to, in my opinion, like completely break their, their possibility of succeeding in life. Right. We have examples one after another of people who've missed a lot of days of school and still found the tenacity and the resiliency to, to fight their way back through. And this right here, I just feel like it's chaos. It really is organized chaos. 
It is. And even the kids that are doing the assignments, they're doing them just so they can say they did them. They're not getting anything out of it. They're not like I on every assignment I'm making, give me one um, constructive response, just one paragraph per, per assignment. I'm getting sentences, partial sentences, you know, so even though they're doing the work, they're not getting anything out of it. Um, it is just chaos and it's hardly organized. <laughs> <laughs> so they told us to um, just kind of give them review things that they've already done, um, you know, things that they already know how to do. But then in the next breath, they say we need to be modeling and giving them instruction, but they're doing review. So, you know, there's not really anything to model. Um, but I've, I've been trying to find things with every lesson to uh give them some sort of model some sort of instruction um but it's really not necessary especially because they're on the computer so they really can't like today their assignment um some of the questions were about central ideas so i was going to do a little mini lesson on central idea but i didn't feel like it <laughs> so I, I just I, I didn't do it i mean they know central idea well I, i've taught central idea they've done it you know year and then that's the thing with english it's it's all it all cycles back. So it's not like they're doing anything that is completely unfamiliar. Plus, they can Google anything they need to at this point. Yeah. So I've been doing live models, and then I upload them onto Google Classroom. I went into it thinking, oh, I'm going to have them do this at this time and read a book at this time and this and this. And after, like, the first day, I was like, you know what? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just do your odyssey on the computer. Um, we'll do some of these lessons, but it's, you know, it's, it's, this is a vacation. I mean, for a lot of people, it's not, but it's, it's, it's just a non-work period, so I'm yeah. not even going to try to force it at this yeah. point. So we want, you got to find something to do for self-care while you have this little break. Even though it's not a vacation, something to do for, for yourself, just to, you know, use this time to re-energize. But you look kind of fresh. You look like you did something self-care. No, well, that's because I made sure to, because I work out in the morning now, so I do my workouts, so let me make sure I have my shower taken, and I put on some eyebrows and mascara. <laughs> that, that was it. So let me what kind of workout do you do? Do you run, you lift? I've been riding my bike. I, I ran track for 16 years, so I'm a runner, but I can't run. I mean, I have really bad knees, so and joints so my dad told me to just stick to the bike for a while kind of you know build my muscles and things back up and then i'll then i can start running after a while so i'm just on my bike i do abs and um like squats and lunges and things like that yeah but, that's, that's it. Is like one of the best ways of, of self-care honestly exercise it is. release the endorphins yeah it is and it had been so a really long time since I'd done anything. So that kind of is like some self-care for me, just taking a couple hours in the morning to myself, riding so my So during the school year, when you were in the classroom, you weren't doing that? No, absolutely not. I couldn't even dream of working that into my schedule. 